This is my second controller build. Uh, the first one I built a large box using experience light card. Uh, this one I'm going to do a medium sized box, which is slightly larger than the large bed box, uh, which I have my Falcon F16 in. And so I'm going to go through this medium sized build. So let's get going. So I've assembled two power supplies on the back of board and it has these plastic mounts that you can do multiple stacks. You can look at my other video and see how they stack together. Uh, one thing that is different on this particular build is that the gray uh, carriage bolts are uh, the ones that are longer than the silver ones, opposite of the large box. I'll flip this up on upside down and you'll see the carriage bolts, they fit right into square slots. And you just tighten it down in place. And you can see I've tied these two power supplies together. Uh, one power supply will be used for one side of the controller card and the other, other power supply for the opposite side. All right, now it's time to put the backer board into the, the box. Be careful of the cables here the cable for the fan also one thing i found with the, the these studs for the backer board they actually kind of slipped out um and they would kind of spin so what i ended up doing was putting some nuts here to uh to lock it in position and those are m4 studs let's get this out of the way all right there we go it all slapped in place so now I'm going to install the, uh, the, the kit came with some of these M4, uh, nuts. They have the nylon in there to prevent them from backing out. I, uh, I also like to put in some washers. I had, or I had bought a set of M4, M4 washers. So I'm just going to go through. It's a little tight in here with my, my hands to get all the washers and everything in place. So I'll just go pop them in place here. The power supplies and the back of board are now in the box, all locked into position. These nuts were hard to get in place. Uh, it's kind of, especially in the corners, it's kind of crammed. What I found that worked best actually is I got a, uh, a five sixteenths inch uh, magnetic that I had around a uh, socket to put the nut inside there and then I lined it over the stud and I was able to turn it and get it to engage that made it a little bit easier um, just a suggestion for you guys out there if you try and do it uh, before we get too far with the build I thought I'd do a walkthrough in the control box the bottom plate is you get that customized or depending on what your build is this one has 16 outputs. It has outputs for Ethernet cables, as well as two power supply. On the side, you have an intake vent There's on both sides. And then the top, it's kind of got like a mushroom top, and it's got some vents that point down. And that is the exhaust for the fan. Uh, there is the 12-volt uh, fan for the exhaust, and that moves the air as it rises up. It gets hot, hot air rises. It gets pushed out by the fan and comes out the side vents. The front of the box has a locking, a lock on it. It uses a special key with a triangular uh, inset for the key. The back of the box has some mounting holes that are threaded. There to install these brackets that you can then use a clamp um, to wrap it around a pole. Uh, there's the screws. I took. They came in installed the screws. I took them out so it was easier to put the uh, backer board for the power supplies in. It was kind of causing it. They stuck up a little bit and was getting in the way. These holes on the back that are threaded, like I just said, is uh, gives you some options for mounting this. You can use the included brackets with a strap. Um, you could use. You could attach something to those brackets. You could also tap a uh, put a piece of wood with some holes in it and use those holes to uh, lock the piece of wood and come out on the side and mount it mount it somewhere more easily so it gives you lots of options i like the approach now that the power supplies are installed i'm going to install the cable glands here for 
the X connects are the outputs for the controller. The Ethernet uh, connectors, which are for receivers and uh, your your net show network connection in, as well as the power cords going into the box. Now I'm going to install one at each of the different types of connectors we have. Uh, they all have this this nut on the back. You just unscrew it, and then you put it in the hole, and you tighten it up. And just get it nice and snug. I do like um, the metal backer plate, which versus my bud boxes, which are plastic. The plastic's thicker than the metal, so you get better thread engagement with these nuts on the back side. So that is definitely a plus in my mind. I've had some issues with on my bud box of not having enough thread engagement for it to keep these in secure, and so they popped off and they've had to repair them. And I like to make sure that the connector is all in the same orientation for all of them. So I'm going to make the, the locking piece point down. Again, you just tighten it up. You can come back with a wrench or a socket to tighten all that together afterwards. All right, so now I'm going to finish installing the rest of them. I'm now going to install the controller card on the backer plate. It's got four holes here. To line up, I'm going to use these M3 screws. They came with the uh, with the kit. You'll need the two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. These plastic spacers. I'm also going to do something a little different. The kit, this over the side. The kit didn't come with these, but I'm going to do is I'm going to install this on the bottom. I'm going to put an M3 washer here on it. And then I'm going to have, I have an extra nut here that I purchased. This bag of keep, that I keep around. And I'm going to s tighten that up. And I'm going to do that for all four posts. That way, if I ever need to take it off when I undo these lock nuts, I can easily take the card out without completely removing this board, this, this plate, if I don't want to. So I'm going to go through that now and install these. And then I'll install the card. I've now installed the posts. And now I'm going to take these spacers. And I'm going to install it on each of the posts. Now, a lot of the kits come with these spacers. But you can also use refrigerator tubing. Um, Quarter-inch refrigerator tubing works perfectly well. And it's cheap. It's easy to get your hands on. I have some floating around. All right, now I'm going to put it over the studs. All right, and then I'm going to put these nuts here with the lock washers on the little studs and tighten it up. Now that I've uh, installed a controller on the backer plate, box, is I'm going to use these refrigerator tubing. This is 3 8 inch uh, OD uh, tubing that I've cut to, the, to length. The kit came with these blue standoffs. Um, they're all in the small, and it didn't stack up to the right height that I was looking for. So I had some of this around, I just decided to use it. Um, and then once I've got these, I'll put these refrigerator tubing pieces on the outer posts. And then I'll be using these quarter inch, these nuts that came with the, with the kit to mount, mount it in place. When I cut these to size, I measured these studs here, these studs here, because that's where the whole back of plate's going to sit. So now I'll take the plate and I'll put it over the mounting holes here. And so now I can go through and install the nuts. I'll take uh, DC power off of one power supply, run it to this side of the board, and another run to the other side of the board. That way I have power coming in to each half from two different power supplies. <clears throat> and I'll probably move the back of plate out to put those wires on and put them back on. And then I'll do the ethernet cables as well. I'll build those myself and cut them each so they're nice, just the perfect size. You can buy them um, off Amazon or whatever, the ethernet cables and coil them up. There's plenty of room. Uh, I won't, won't cause any issues. And then we'll run the X connects and run them to each one of these terminals. I've wired in the Ethernet cables 
on the controller card. There are the two DMX, the two long range receivers, and the network cable all wired up together. Um, going to these Ethernet pass through, pass through connectors. This is the back of my temperature controller card. Uh, you will see the VCC connection and the GND, the ground. Uh, those are connecting to my power supply uh, directly below the, the controller here. And then the S1 and S0, those are uh, dry contacts, a switch that connects to the fan. So what I had to do, since they're dry contacts, which means there's no power f flowing directly from the board to it, um, I ran the red, the, the positive voltage, and the jumper cable on the same, and so I went from, the jumper cable goes from the positive voltage to the S1 port, um, and then on the opposite, on the S0 port, um, I connected in a, uh, the, the fan, fan line, the red line for that, and then the black from the fan goes into the ground cable, as well as from the ground on the power supply runs into the same port. And that gives you the ability to turn the fan on and off and controlled by temperature. And that little connector right here that you see, that is for the temperature probe, which I have mounted right here, which is towards the top of the container. There you go. And I've mounted it using, I'll flip this out of the way. There's a back plate. I just used double-sided tape and stuck it to it. And I'll flip this around and put it in position. Then I'll demonstrate for you how it works. You have this button here, which is the set point. I'm going to hold it down. And now it's flashing. And hit this display right here is for the set point. I'm right now at 61 degrees in my shop. I'm going to run the temperature below that. Uh, at 63. You need to go down a little lower. I'm down to 57. I'm going to hit the set point button. Locks it in, and the fan is now starting up. All right, and if I take the temperature, and actually another thing, I'll see this little light here turns green. Now, if I change the set point now and I bring it up, let's bring it up to 63. I don't have to hold it long, Mary. Sixty-three. I hit set point, and you saw the red light. It went off. It turned off, and it turned off the fan. You also have a power button here. You can cycle it completely on. There's off and on. Okay, I just push it again, and it turns it on. So that's how the temperature controller works. With this controller car, I'm going to use the X connectors as well. Um, this is the female side. I'm not doing power injection. Just going to go directly to the controller card and out to my lights. And here are the, uh, the color codes. Black would be uh, ground, yellow is data, and red is the positive voltage. Now to pick it, to get it through the, uh, the uh, connectors, I am going to nip off a little bit of the plastic sheathing to give me a bit of an angle because those PJ7 um, connectors can be, need to be a little tight sometimes. I give it a little bit of a ridge so it can slide right through the connector more easily. Now that I've got the ridge on the connector, I'm going to thread it to the bottom cable gland. And now I'm going to direct it up on the back side so I can put it in to its connection. Now I'm going to wire in the, the pigtail directly in a controller card. These are the new Experience Lights connector uh, blocks. It's the negative on the left, the data is in the middle, and the positive is on the right. I'm going to get this turned just a little bit. We'll do the negative one first. You take a screwdriver, you push down the terminal block, and you slide it in place. There you go. Now we'll do the data line. Push it down, we'll lift up. See, I pulled and it came out. You gotta make sure it's in there far enough. 
There we go, it's in. Now for the positive. There, all in place. So next I'll be taking and doing the uh, number two connector, three, four, just in this order, back and forth, back and forth, all the way across the card. Um, I'll do that off camera and show you the end result. Well, I finished the build for a medium sized enclosure from your Pixel Store using the Experience Light 16 port controller. Also with a temperature controller for keeping the box cool with two power supplies. All of the output ports are labeled. The ethernet cable connectors are labeled on the inside the box. And we got the pigtails all labeled with the output numbers. And here the test pattern running. Um, everything's working perfectly. Well, I hope this, uh, this build will help somebody out there. Uh, you guys all have a great day.